Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast, a conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Good morning, ECC family, and we want to say welcome to anyone who might be just tuning in to check out what's going on at Effort of Community Church. We just got done um, a prophetic weekend, and we tend to believe it is a pretty unique thing. It's part of our DNA of our church to believe that our, our God wants to speak, and speak clearly. And, and don't get me wrong, we believe God has big general words for the church. And matter of fact, he might even have specific words for individual churches, like we see in the seven churches. But we also believe that the Bible is demonstrating historically, and even in some of the teaching books, that God has specific things for people. Even when Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, let me remind you of that powerful word of knowledge and that gift that was spoken over you. Stir it up. Make it happen. And we're a church that believes that God's still doing that. Matter of fact, Psalm 139 comes to mind. How n- numerous are your thoughts toward me, O God? If I were to number them, they would outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. So we're a church that believed that this weekend God wanted to show up and do something. Over 2,000 people came out. I believe felt almost like almost all of them got prayer. When of course that's not necessarily the case, but so many people received mm-hmm. some stuff from the Lord, and it was great. Matt Swords, uh, our dis- pastor of discipleship here at Effort Community Church, was in charge of coordinating that. Matt, why? Like, first of all, you love doing it, and secondly, yeah. what's it like to steward us through that kind of thing? Well, um, yes, I do love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jim. And obviously, what goes into coordinating an event like this is is a strong. Uh, team, uh, mm-hmm. Kristen Martin here on the team, Kay Bauer, uh, just administrative gurus, just did such an excellent job, obviously, of reaching out. But what makes this weekend possible? Uh, probably the biggest thing is obviously the volunteer depth base, the, the depth of the base of volunteerism here uh, at the church. Uh, so, you know, as you mentioned, 2,000 people that were here, we provided ministry on, you know, four different uh, moments. Mm-hmm. So it's Friday night, Saturday night, and then two times on Sunday morning. And so having volunteer teams at each of those uh, times to then provide ministry to whoever wanted it at those times. And actually this year, we changed the structure uh, of how we've done it in the past. Uh, for many people who were not here this year that may have experienced it in years prior, uh, it was just after the service let out, we had, you know, 20 teams available in the front and people just got in line and waited, you know, upwards of an hour to an hour and a half to receive ministry, which, um, you know, worked for that time. Mm-hmm. But one of the, the things that COVID actually forced was creativity. That's right. And in that creative um, flow, we actually developed, came up with a structure that served us a lot better. And so we actually... Uh, had teams ministering through the entirety of the service, and and we asked people to register for times. And so ahead of each service, we knew who was planning to come and at what time we had scheduled them to receive ministry. So it allowed such more, uh, a lot more efficiency That's right. in ministering to each team, which then allowed us to schedule things out a lot more in advance and then take the volunteer teams that we did have and uh, just be a lot more efficient That's with right. it. So it worked out really well. Yeah, and I heard a lot of good things. A lot of people naturally, we don't mind the lines when something's going on like right. this, but it sure is neat when they're not quite as long. And right. and also I heard that families really enjoyed the ability to sign up because it allowed them to focus more on if you have a family with three, four, five kids, uh, the prayer the prayer teams were able to pray into that. Right. And I have to say this, I was on a prayer team. Rachel and I teamed up to be a part of praying after one of the services. And I have to tell you, although even although her and I have a, a bit of a gift in being able to pray over people and experience words of knowledge for them, um, and, and even the prophetic, I have to tell you that even we were nervous. Like, like, mm. hey, are we prayed up enough? And and are are are, are is, is it fair for us to be people that play such a pivotal role you through right. you, the spirit through us in people's lives? We were a little nervous going a couple of days in, and I just remember one point saying like hey, you know what, this church has prayed up for this. In other Mm. words, it felt like when we got here to be a part of it, there was already a stream that was flowing so much that it was just a matter of getting into that stream. And it took us, and it did such a wonderful thing, not just in us, but in the people we got to pray for. But that brings us to something, if I could could bring it up. Like, Mm -hmm. let's face the facts that... God works through the finite. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My goodness, he'll even speak through a donkey. Yeah. But sometimes the very tool that God's using 
is right on and other times it's not you know mm-hmm. you look at like a passage like jeremiah 29 where god's actually frustrated he's like hey your prophets and your diviners in your midst are not giving you good words right. matter of fact they're misleading you but it's ironic at the exact same time he's saying that through jeremiah whose word he trusts in people's lives right so it does come down to sometimes people doing their best and sometimes just being off or sometimes actually some people actually manipulating i'm wondering how do we go about discerning Sure. Uh, the prophetic in our lives and what God might be using it for, and what might actually just be a byproduct of the vessel He's using. Yeah, yeah. There's Big there's question. definitely a <laughs> lot there, and you know, part of what I would have done with each set of prophetic teams that we brought together at each of our services was just, um, just one. I prayed over them and just blessed them to hear from the Lord, but also just encouraged them out of Psalm 139, which you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. How blessed are your thoughts towards me, which outnumber the sand on the seashore. Just encouraging them to say, like, God has so many thoughts about each person. You are simply asking Lord for one of his thoughts That's about right. the person in front That's of you. And word. so we want to kind of dismantle a lot of the, um, the, the stress that can build up or the anxiety around, like, oh, my word, I'm about to stand on behalf of God and share something with this person that we believe is actually from God himself and not to make light of that reality. Yeah. But it's also God's intention and purpose and what he created. This is his idea that we are merely stepping oh, that's into. That's a good reminder, right? So with that, there's... He's not there's, doing it reluctantly. No, right? not at all. And he's not... His hand isn't forced to have to do it this way either. This was his idea. And so realizing he thinks a lot about everybody, and these are good thoughts, that he, this is his structure that he created where he poured out his spirit and gave gifts to men to minister on his behalf the mm-hmm. truth of the kingdom of heaven that we with faith say okay if that's if that's true and this is his idea then we simply posture ourselves as a vessel for him to use so with that in mind yes there's definitely a lot of creative liberty that is that is taken because obviously the different vessels each of us are, are very different mm-hmm. um, not only in the ways that we hear God, but also on the way we express it. And, and so that can leave a person, you know, that we're praying for with, um, you know, a, a list of words or, you know, they go through a prayer line and they have five minutes worth of a recording yeah. of different scriptures or, you know, different... A picture, uh, anything. Exactly. Right? And it could be all over the map. And so, yeah, learning how to steward it is 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 a very important part of of just, you know, not just receiving the word, but but bringing it to fulfillment, to That's completion. Right. You know, imagining a seed being planted in the ground. How do you water it well, get the sunlight it needs, all the elements necessary to produce fruit yeah. from that seed. That's good stuff. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of fun this weekend. It's interesting when you're praying over people, sometimes a word comes to mind, mm-hmm. sometimes an idea, and sometimes a picture. I, I remember praying for one gentleman this weekend, and I almost had to apologize because I had this picture of this racing speedboat, the kind of one-seaters with a kind of engine just sitting there idling. And I just began to speak into that and pray into that image. And I got done, and there was some other stuff, five minutes worth of stuff that took place. And it was so interesting to have that guy at the end go, I cannot tell you how much that speedboat image. It's almost right. like the Spirit took the image and did something in him, minus even all the other jabbering or talking that, or right. praying that I was doing. So it's so wonderful what the Spirit does. So that mm-hmm. does bring up questions like, how do we discern it's the voice of God? How right. do we use this, right? Yeah. If, some, we, if we have one of these experiences, like this young man who all of a sudden got an image and helped put words to something or an image yeah. of something going on in his life, how do we use this stuff in our life? Yeah. Uh, so just some real quick bullet points on just yeah. like, here. here's how you can test a word. Uh, first and foremost would be scriptural. Is it scriptural mm-hmm. or the word you receive? Are there actually scriptures that go against mm-hmm. the word? You know, somebody comes up and says, um, hey, um, I, I feel like God's just saying he, he's really ashamed of you. You know, it could be something totally off the wall, and you can be like, well, that actually is not scriptural. You know, mm-hmm. the blood of Jesus actually uh, explicitly says that I am pleasing to the Lord mm-hmm. uh, because of the blood. And so, you know, if, if you receive a word that's not scriptural, mm-hmm. then you can toss it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, second would be, if, you know, assuming that it is scriptural, is it consistent with God's nature and his character? Uh, I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 4, where the devil quoted scripture, and yet the spirit behind the word in the, the verse he quoted was was absolutely uh, an abuse and um, 
uh, counterfeit to mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. true nature of mm-hmm. the Lord and the intention of that what that scripture was mm-hmm. was put there for. That's well said. Yeah. And so you know you can a person can be saying, "Hey, this verse came to mind, and this is for you." Um, but when you hear it, you're like, you know what? I understand that's in 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 scripture, but there is something off. It's almost like it has what I would call like a different tone of voice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you get familiar with the tone of voice of the Lord. That although another person can say the same word, it is absolutely from a different mm-hmm. uh, spirit. Okay. And so uh, there is there's a great need for discernment in this. But this would bring me to the third point, which is actually what I believe. Uh, each person has a base level of discernment. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, in John chapter 7, Jesus said, If anyone wishes to do the will of God, they will know if this teaching is from me or if it is from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Which, which I love because um, to establish a base level of discernment for myself, you, or anyone watching, it really begins with a surrendered heart saying, God, I desire to do your will. Mm-hmm. And with that desire, you can hear things that come in and, and immediately have a, a base level of discernment to know that, like, that's actually not what the Lord is saying to me. Mm-hmm. And the, the third point would be, does it sit well with your spirit? Does it actually, when you hear the word, does it seem to confirm or you have a yes towards it? Mm-hmm. Or does it leave you kind of off put or, you know, just kind of sitting at a distance from it saying, like, yeah, I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean it has to logically make sense in our head, but it is to say that if you genuinely desire to do the will of the Lord, that He is going to speak to you in alignment with that desire. Mm-hmm. That the, the the way the Lord will speak to you, whether it's from a prophetic uh, prayer line or you're reading your Bible in the morning, He will speak to you in a vein that is in alignment with your desire to follow Him. That's right. um, it, it'll be... It'll be like a green light, or you know, it's, it, there's a drawing a blank on the right language, but yeah. there will be a grace to follow within that vein of surrender. Yeah, so those are three quick things. I think it's great, and I also think the role the community plays in that. I, I know exactly this, that right. Rachel and I had a prayer over us. We went home and actually played it again and listened to it, mm-hmm. and then in that context compared it in the not when we're just standing in front of someone, but we were at home then, and then we even had a friend listen to it because a friend can hear something and actually hear something in it for you or even help you say, like, you know what? That might have just been the finiteness of the prayer. I mean, for sure, one thing about our our teams here, we don't have any false prophets, but we might have some finite ones, right? (laughs) Because they happen, right? It's the way I like to view it, where where God uses interesting vessels to bring about his word on this earth. But I do want to remind us that I think some churches would sit and go, but wow, that's so subjective, or that could be so manipulated, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I think I would want to respond to that and say this, hey, I would rather be caught treading in deeper water trying to hear God in these ways, particularly if God wants to speak like this. Mm -hmm. Because there's something we have to keep in mind. If God wants to speak at next levels with us, Mm -hmm. if God wants to speak to deeper things in us, sometimes it comes with the uncomfortable and not Mm -hmm. always being able to know exactly what's going on. You know, even Jesus healing someone and they seeing something like trees and then getting touched again and seeing even more. It's something we believe for around here, and I'm just really proud of of this weekend and what took place. Yeah, no, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, God can do a lot with genuine, pure heart. Yeah. Uh, and whether or not we succeed or quote unquote fail, it's really not about that as much as it's a genuine heart before the Lord says, saying, God, you made this available. And I, not just for myself, do I want to walk in it, but so that people would know that there's a living God and that people can be empowered and uplifted and encouraged and edified, which is the point of prophecy, right. to, to strengthen the body and, and encourage and build up. And so providing that heart, um, and which every one of our teams would have provided that, um, there's, there's a lot of uh, that God can work with in that. And at the end of the day, if something does come out of us that's that's truly not from the Lord and it's more just from mm-hmm. you know um, you know just from ourselves again God is so much bigger than those potential obstacles that can be there um, to to truly navigate and and you know he's overly confident in his holy Spirit to do uh, what needs done and in, in keeping us yeah. in following the Lord so with that um, there's a lot of excitement to say like, you know, I'm not afraid of necessarily, I'm not afraid to the point of being paralyzed, mm-hmm. of making a mistake. 
I'm very sober to the reality that I don't want to just be flippant and just saying, oh, whatever, God's right. bigger than all this. So there is a balance That's right. of yeah. being a good steward of it. But, but um, again, with a genuine heart that just wants to love the person right in front of you, mm-hmm. um, I think we're a lot more prophetic than we realize, and it doesn't have to be this dramatic picture That's of angels exactly and all right. these things. That's it's right. simply... Hey, I just, you know, there was a person I gave a word to yesterday. Uh, We actually did prophecy over the phone for people that couldn't be here as well, which was fun. Um, But as I'm praying for her, I just saw a picture of uh, zoo animals. And I won't go into the word, but it was a really clear picture of these animals in a zoo. And so I just shared the picture of what I saw and then shared uh, a verse that came with it and the encouragement. And she said, you know, since the, the shutdown, her and her husband were actually watching uh, I think it's the San Diego Zoo or, or some zoo that do, does online videos yeah, you like get every to watch day. Watch a panda bear all day long. Exactly, right? <laughs> and they were watching. You know, for months now, have been keeping up to date with the zoo animals and different birthings that have happened on the zoo. And so it was like, it was a it was an encouraging word that came from scripture. You know, what I gave her, I had no idea they're watching the zoo every day, but that little bit of. Um, specific, like a, a specific touching point to their scenario, allowed that that encouragement from Scripture to settle in all the more. It's yeah. like being salted, you know, That's and it just right. tastes a lot better. That's great. So, yeah, I know. I had a fun one. I uh, I wasn't going to share this, but I, I, it's fun now that you brought this up. Mm-hmm. I want us to be a church that has an expectation that God wants to speak. Right. And I don't mean an expectation as if God owes us something, but out of the abundance of who this God is, this God wants to encounter us, right? And is looking for mechanisms through which to do it. I mean, behold, I looked for someone is such a reoccurring phrase and concept in the scriptures. And we want to be that kind of community. And I was touched yesterday where I, um, Rachel and I had a lot of fun being on a ministry team. Matter of fact, I went home from the weekend just buzzing from the opportunity to be able to care for a community and to practice mm-hmm. these right. gifts and see God doing stuff in people's lives. So when we listened to the word that had been prayed over us, um, uh, we got done and she goes, well, is there anything you wish it would have said? And I said, well, there is this one area that it would have been really neat if it was direct about, right. but you know, you don't always get that. Yesterday morning, I walk into the church office and one of our youngest, newest staff who's taking off her jacket as I'm exiting the building just goes, Jim, I, I know it's going to sound weird. Like, you could even tell there's, like, I'm talking to Jim, and, like, is there is Jim going to think this is weird because of his experience in the faith or something? She goes, I just had this dream last night, and can I tell you? And she she told me the dream, and Rachel and I were in it. And I'm telling you, that dream was straight to yeah. the thing that just the day before I had said to Rachel, like, ah, it would have been neat if God spoke to that. And you're standing there, and you're... you're more than even what you heard, you're just amazed yeah. at the kindness of right. God to just address and give a nod to something yeah. or to say something like that. And that's the kind of community I think we are and need to keep being, because I don't think it's just about edifying. I think it's part of witness and evangelism in this yeah. world right now. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I do believe Matt is one of our lead people in helping steward us in the prophetic we believe the deepest and primary purpose of it from the scriptures is to remind us of edification and right. the building up of the saints. Yeah. But I'm also telling you there's a hunger and a thirst for believing that God still speaks and speaks in the moment and to the immediate. Yeah. And I want to be the kind of place that's available to that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Big and time. And just to piggyback on that just one little bit um, is... I genuinely believe, genuinely believe people are, are a lot more prophetic than they realize. Oh, I agree. And, Much more uh, natural, too. Name-dropping Wes Sechrist. So <laughs> Ooh, who I, I, I was on a team with him on a number of occasions this past weekend. And, you know, so we start praying. You know, I, I share, pray, whatever. And, and then Wes will come in, and as, as pastoral as, as he is, he'll say, well, I saw this picture and, you know, he'll detail it and then say, does this mean anything? And, it, like, without fail, each person would, like, start to tear up and cry. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, Wes, yeah. like, you are the most prophetic person I've ever met. Like, this is incredible. And then he walks away and does an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> right, on the exactly, side. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I just, I love that because Wes would probably be, he would probably be the last person to come up to you and say, yeah. I have a gift of prophecy. Right. And, and, and it's not even to say that it needs to be dramatic to say that I can hear God and share with you what I believe the Lord is saying. And I think, you know, if if the idea of being prophetic is is somewhat, you know, off-putting, 
Well, then just remove that word for now and just really replace it with God speaks. I want to hear what he's saying. And I believe he loves people That's so right. much that the people I encounter every day, he has something to say to them. And, and I want to hear God on their behalf. And so that, that simple framing can really open up a lot of doors up of opportunity as you go about your day just mm-hmm. to say, God, what are you saying about this person? Yeah, and you don't have to, we don't have to hang a ton of heavy spiritual language no. on it because the, the heart of God toward us is very natural. It's yeah. really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks so much for a great weekend. And as many of you know, mm-hmm. we wrapped up 21 days of prayer and fasting as a community. We partly believe the move of God we saw over the weekend was related to a drawing near to him and him drawing near to us. And so we want to say thank you to so many of you who, in whatever way, um, slowed yourself a bit over these last 21 days and looked for God and things mm-hmm. and being a part of digging deeper. We're about to go into what we oftentimes do in the month of February is uh, a series of sermons on relationships. And we're particularly going to be focusing this month on the other, the social other, mm-hmm. the the um, c- people in our community, other, um, and what it means to be peacemakers in these days. And so we're looking forward to these upcoming messages. Kevin's going to be kicking us off, and then we'll dive in further. Anything else you want to close with, Matt? No, I would um, I would uh, just, I brought two books here, actually. If you wanted to learn more about prophecy, these are two books which I think are excellent. One is called User-Friendly Prophecy by Larry Randolph, just describing in very, very excellent and detailed but base-level understanding of what prophecy is. And then also Steve Thompson wrote a book called You May All Prophesy. And those two books are excellent if you want to learn more about prophecy. That's wonderful. Hey, we appreciate you, and we hope you have a great week. See you in this weekend. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and of course, learn more about us by visiting effortacommunitychurch.com. Community